This is the unboxing and review of the real grade Zocco 2. We have here the mass produced Zocco 2. This is the standard green color that comes in it, and this is from the Principality of Xeon. This is the real grade kit, which means that they have figured out how the, the mobile suit would actually look if it was in real life. So it's going to have a little bit more detail and be more concerned about how the panels go together and stuff like that. This is the fourth kit in the real grade line. And one of the things that's typical of a real grade kit is that they have, they have true inner frames that are separate from uh, the rest of the model. Now, the one thing also is that throughout the process of making these models, Bandai constantly change and improve the inner frame based on feedback from people who have built it and their own testing and such to make it sturdier because the earlier inner frames had very loose joints and stuff like that because what happens is they, they mold the inner frame on the runner with the articulation already built into the pieces. So they did do quite a bit of uh, modifications. In, in fact, this is just the fourth model and the inner frame for this suit is different than the original inner frame for the first model. This is the second iteration of the inner frame. Now this could also be because of the difference between what the, um, because the very first model was the Granddaddy Gundam, the RX-78-2. So it could just be a difference in the needs for the, for that type of mobile suit as opposed to a Zaku. But they did improve all throughout. I think they're up to like 17 or 18 now with the newer RG kits. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. So this is typical of a manual for the RG where there is an explanation of how the inner frame goes together and where it is on the runners. They have the right, like they normally do the runners here. And the nice thing is that most of the runners are going to be uh, polystyrene. So you can paint and panel line them without worrying about it. The exceptions are a couple of places where you might, definitely the inner frame has ABS plastic, so you got to be careful what you use with the type of uh, paint and, and panel lining because ABS plastic can be more sensitive to various chemicals and it can, it can damage the ABS plastic. And then there are going to be some runners that have some additional framing that goes on to the inner frame, which then the armor will uh, attached to and that this one has another runner which is all ABS but the rest is all polystyrene so that's awfully nice and because it's an RG there's going to be more color pictures and explanations throughout the manual unfortunately this is an earlier kit so everything is in Japanese some information is going to be in English but it's mostly just the um, the uh, um, schematics of the uh, actual mobile suit itself, the properties and stuff like that. And, but it's gonna go from, it's gonna go through each body part like any other manual does. Now, it looks like the real grades, they start from the bottom up. So they'll start with the legs and the waist and then go up. Whereas like other kits might start with the chest and the head first. Now, one thing I did notice going through here is that, and, and I'll point it out more when we look at the runners, the typical kind of cabling that goes around on the Zaku, like right here around the waist and stuff like that, instead of them being single pieces that are molded with the, uh, the, um, the round pieces on them as well, they're going to be separate. So there's going to be lots of places in the manual where you have to basically put the pieces through the round pieces and it'll tell you how many of each one is needed at any particular time. So just when you're putting it together, just be aware of that. 
I believe all of them will eventually be used, but in order to put the pieces together, not only do you have to worry about which the size of the of the rings that go around it, that's what they the rings. You have to be careful on which pieces they want you to put in at each time. So just be aware of that. So and they do come, this being a real grade, they do come with, with stickers. They're called realistic stickers. Or I guess they're saying decals, but they're really like the stickers that you get. They're not uh, water slide or anything like that. And they're designed to be more realistic to real life. They're, they're more of a, a matte finish on the, on, the deca on the stickers instead of a glossy one that you get with the normal ones. They still have edging around it. So they probably will be visible. They might be less visible. But I would recommend that if you can, try to get the water slide decals instead of using the, the stickers that come with it because then you know that the the um the edges aren't going to show because the water slide decals just are very flat and then if you use the softener and stuff like that that basically kind of eliminates any need for or any uh edging and stuff like that on them so the runners are pretty typical it's got the the colors that are are typical of a zaku there will be um, being a real real grade, there's more color separation through the plastics as opposed to any kind of stickers. And there's going to be more variety in the colors. So you, as you can see, you've got your military green here, but then you also have a lighter green for certain areas. So there's going to be a lot more than you would get with a typical like HG kit or something like that. So... You know, we've got our A, which is mostly the, the green armor pieces with some clear pieces. And then this kind of almost green-gray color. The B runner is our um, inner frame. And like I said, that you know, it actually does incorporate the, um, the, the articulation in with the pieces because the way that they mold this since it's different types of plastic. And you can see here, it's the... M it's the Advanced Mobile Suit Joint 2. So this is the second iteration of the inner frame that they created. So one thing, you, you do need to be fairly careful when taking these apart. And the instructions are very detailed as to what you need to take off and what you need to leave. Otherwise, you might wind up clipping off something that's part of the, the piece because of the way it had to be molded and such like that. Just pay close attention. And like I showed this before, here's your lighter green armor pieces. This here looks like it's, um, this is the D frame. So this looks like it's going to be its hands and then it's probably more uh, frame stuff. It looks like And the same with this, it's like it's more frame stuff. I'll come to this one next. And then there's some more armor, more of the, the light green armor pieces. And then this looks like it's the weapon, which is more of a, not quite black. It looks like it's more of a very dark green, just this side of black type color. And then here I wanted to do this last because here's those rings that go on for the uh, cabling effects. And there's a couple different sizes of them. And, you know, normally what I do is I take the pieces off. I take all the pieces off and clean them up before I do a build. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these yet. I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to take everything off and just keep them separate so that I can, you know, they're all the same um, of the two sizes. So you just need to worry about how many you put on each piece of plastic that represents the cabling of the, of the uh, cable pieces. So then I can clean the sides separate, but you know, these are very small pieces. So it's going to be take a while to clean them, but I think it's going to be easier to clean them one or two at a time than to have them on the put together on the model and then try to clean them up. But I, like I said, I haven't figured out that yet. I'll figure that out when I decide to do the uh, remove gate removal. And here are the, stickers that come with it. Now there are some color correcting for your metallic colors 
I'm not sure if I'm going to use these because I got some new metallic uh, markers, so I might try those on this. But here's your typical ones with, you know, the eye spot that we color when needed and stuff like that. But as you can see, they're a bit, they're more matte than, let's see here, can I get that to focus? Yeah, there we go. They're more matte colored than, than shiny like the other decals are. But what I did is I did get water slide decals from uh, Delpi, which is a really good third party water decal supplier. So I'll be applying these. Now this does not include the metallic ones. So like I said, whether I use these stickers or whether I paint the metallics, uh, I'll decide that when it's time. And then here's one of the the pieces that hold the cabling or some of the cabling. It's, it's, it's a flexible kind of plastic. So that does it for the mass-produced Zaku 2 in the real grade. So I will see you for the next one. We have here the real grade model of the MS06F Zaku 2. This is the generic mass produced Zaku in the traditional Zaku green colors. This has the distinction of being the first ever mobile suit that appeared in any Gundam anything, be it manga, anime, whatever. This was the very first thing that showed. So, this is a very nice piece. It has uh, great color separation. It's got the dark green, the light green, I mean, the mid, I guess the mid green, actually, and then a nice light green to emphasize certain areas. It's got a bunch of different thrusters all over the place. Now, this is not a high mobility or high maneuver piece uh, model. But it does have thrusters all over the place, a couple on the backpack, uh, along the legs. So this could move pretty well. Uh, this was used both in space and on the ground. There were, I don't think there were many modifications that happened to make them work either way. One neat thing about the real grade, and uh, you know, it's neat because it looks really nice. They are a little bit more of a pain to put together, but the cabling... There's an inner uh, piece of plastic in, in many of them. Th these on the legs, oh shoot, that came right off. Okay, these on the legs have a spring, which I'll put back together. <laughs> um, I shouldn't have pulled it, which hold it so that's so it's flexible so that it can move with the leg movement, and I'll get with the movement, the articulation a little bit later. These other ones have a solid plastic piece in the middle, but the rings are all separate just like these right here. And um, so they're a little bit of a pain to put together. They're, but you know the way that Bandai did it is they made sure that everything was lined up properly in sections on the runners. So once you figured that out and put everything in the right order, they were pretty easy to, to put together. Sometimes pieces would, you know, the rings would come off or something like that. But overall it was nice. And, and I think it's a nice aesthetic for the cabling as opposed to just being a molded piece of plastic. Um, this being a real grade and this being an early real grade, let me just put this back on there and then I'll, yeah, get that out of the way. Um, this being an early real grade, there are some issues as far as the, uh, how the pieces go together. Um, the pieces, since they have a lot of detail, and that means a lot more etching on them, tend to be a little bit fragile. I've had a few pieces break. Like, actually, I had, a after I did the clear coat, because this isn't just out of the box. This is, I've panel lined it, and being a real grade, there's a ton of panel line detail all over this, which is, which is nice. Similar to the, you know, the first one I did was the RX-78-2 Gundam. That had a bunch as well. 
and this also has had decals applied. I did a mix of the realistic decals, which many of the chrome ones with chrome on them are the realistic decals. Some of them I then just used water slides and then just painted the chrome bits. And then the other part are, are water slides if they don't have any chrome on them, because I prefer to work with water slides anyway. It's much easier. I mean, the, the, the kit did come with every decal you need, um, but I just like working with water slides more. And I I, I put a, a matte clear coat on it to protect both the paint and the decals and stuff like that. And kind of so it's not as shiny. So it looks a little bit more realistic that way. Um, but this, this being a, uh, a real grade, there's a bit more finicky things. And like I said, after I did the clear coat, what happens, it makes the joints a bit stiffer. So while trying to put the leg back together, because when I clear coat it, I take the major pieces apart and clear coat them individually. The hip joint actually broke. I tried gluing it back together. I thought it worked for it worked for a little while, but then it didn't anymore. So what I actually had to do is, luckily, I had a, a char Zako two, so I cannibalized that to get the because the you know the hip the hip piece it's all one big inner frame piece. So I had to get that. I say cannibalized, but I I, I hadn't built the char one yet, so I just took it out of the kit. I'll have to get replacements for the one piece that I took out. But, um, and then had to redo this, this left leg here, this one here, to put the new inner frame piece in there. Um, so, and, and, you know, and that's another thing with the real grades is that they have incorporated inner frames. And it, and it is really nice because basically all the limb movement is incorporated into the inner frame, the way that it's molded, that the, the joints and everything like that are all part of that. So it has its good points and its bad points. <laughs> this, I, ha I have to say, um, if anyone watched my build or videos for the real grade RX-78 II, the Granddaddy Gundam, you will know that I had all kinds of problems with that one, with pieces coming apart, where I had to glue a whole bunch of stuff, or pieces just not fitting properly, like the shoulders were just a mess because of the way the pieces were not even really attached to anything, just loose, you know, floating, and they were just kept in because the peg of the arm kept it in. But then the shoulder was too thick, so it didn't, the, the, the arm didn't seat in properly and stuff like that. That did not happen with this. This was really a joy to put together. Um, didn't have any issues with pieces fitting together except for right here in the wrist. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But it was just a minor thing. And the only two pieces that I actually had to um, glue on are these two thrusters up here at the top of the backpack. Just because they're, they're teeny tiny and the little kind of piece of plastic that would hold it in place just wasn't big enough. It didn't go in deep enough, so if, if I knocked it, those would come off, and these would be easy to lose. In fact, I almost lost one of them during the build, and I found it. So I decided to glue those on, but that that's it. Now, one really cool thing about this is that in here... Whoops, there we go. Let me get them down here. The eye, as you move the head, the eye follows the movement. Wait a minute, what's going on? There we go. It it doesn't it doesn't go a lot, but it does. So when you move it to the right, the eye will move to the right, and when you move it to the left, it'll it'll go to the left. And then it'll center because what it did is in the head mechanism, there's a little gear so that when you move the neck, when you move the neck, it will move the eye, which is really cool. And I believe that basically there's a bunch of Zaku uh, variants. Most of them are, um, you know, specific either groups like the, you know, the, uh, the Tri-Stars 
or various um, pilots like Char or um, Uma Lightning or, you know, Johnny Ridden. And they're all based on the same framework and, and gearing. So a lot, all of these things will translate over to all the other Zako, um, Zaku, sorry, um, are real great kits as well. So, you know, this, this has the typical, you know, shield that comes with Zaku, which is the shoulder shield. And the other side is the, 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 the spike shoulder. So that's nice. So I, I did really, really enjoy building this. Like I said, had a couple of little minor things, but considering this is just the fourth kit in the real grade line and considering how um, much many issues I had with the um, with the RX-78 II being the first kit, they really learned a lot on how to improve the kits before they did the second one. And actually the char, which is essentially what this is based on, char Zaku 2, was the second kit. So they had learned a lot. In fact, it even has a completely different um, inner frame. There's many things that are shared, but they, they did improve the inner frame. And like I said, especially the way the shoulders are put together and, and they just learned, they, they realized some things that they had made mistakes on and improve them greatly between the first and second kit in the real grade. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the articulation. I already talked about the head, where when you turn it, the eye will go with it. Um, it can move forward, backwards. There is a little... Oh, sorry about that. Let me put that back on. There's a little bit of a lift, but not a lot. Um, but you can turn sideways you're restricted by the amount that you can you can spin it just because of the mechanism that moves the eye the arm can go if we move the if we move the shield out of the way the arm goes completely out like you would expect same thing over here if we if we get the the uh, shoulder out of the way let's see yeah we can get it almost all the way up there's li there's little double joint here that holds the shield. It's the same mechanism that holds the shield here and the shoulder on there. So you can move them out of the way somewhat, but not a whole lot. Let's see here. Whoop. There we go. Um, the arm has a double jointed arm, which is typical for the real grades. Also, there's a little tiny bit of separation on the uh, right here. Let me just take this shield off so that we can see. There's a little bit. There we go. So there, there's a little bit of piece separation here that goes up there as well. Be careful a little bit because sometimes this might pop out a little bit. So when, you, when you're putting it back together, just make sure everything lines up. Same thing over here. This can go the same thing. And then it closes back up. Um, we've got the side skirts. They, they, they won't go up so much because the waist gets in the way. But the waist has some... Uh, there's a lot that there, you know, you can, you can tilt it up a little bit. Um, uh, there's a lot more movement before all the pieces are put, before the waist and the, and the uh, chest are put together. Um, because it was moving all over the place before I had to snap those together. I guess things are getting in the way. Um, we, the only skirts that really move are the front skirts where you can raise them up a little bit, but I wouldn't manipulate them too much because like with the, uh, the RX-78 II, there's just a tiny, tiny ball joint that fits those in. Now they fit in better than the RX-78 II, but if you manipulate them too much, they're going to pop off. The leg also has a double joint all the way back type of thing, and that's why this is a spring so that it can move with the leg movement. And of course, there's, there's nice 
separation up here in the upper leg. And I'll show you here with the one that has the cabling on it. And it is nice and stiff. The movement is nice, you know, the joints are nice and stiff. Now they will loosen up, I'm certain. And I've heard that they, they do loosen up quite a bit if you play with them a lot. And you do want to, you know, just kind of keep an eye because as you can see, it got, oh, there's the head. Okay. <laughs> um, it got caught up on the skirt when I bent it back up. So the, the, the foot has some pretty nice movement here in the front and, you know, backwards and forwards. It's got kind of a three joint type thing where the heel, the middle, and the toe, but they don't move a whole lot individually. But they do have some, you know, together they do do some interesting movement. Now what I decided to do was I did the head that was there. If you can, you noticed that it had the, um, the uh, antenna on it. So that was the command mode. They do, you do have another head for just the regular grunt. Or you can even do the command with a different antenna. You get an act another antenna. I'm, I'm assuming probably one is due to space, one is due to ground. And, and that's the neat thing is that when doing the, um, the decals, you can choose. There are three different... I guess, uh, categories of mobile suit that you can use the decals from. Let me see if I can get this to... They've got like a, a space version, a ground version. Unfortunately, the white isn't focusing very well, but there's a, there's a space version, a ground version, and then another one which I think might be... Um, I'm not sure what that one is because the, the manual doesn't explain it. But also, it has different um, rank signias based on you know, whether it's going to be ground or space as well. So you can choose what you want. And it's got the... It's got n numbers and letters so you can decide what sig insignia you want to show or the number that you want to show on there. So I just... You know, I just did G67, which isn't any... Whoop, there you go. I just did G67, which isn't any particular one. And I went with the with the, uh, the insignia that wasn't shown in the manual, because I thought that was nicer. And all over the place, wherever the insignia is, you have the choice on which one to use. So that, you know, you have all three of them always available no matter where the insignia is on the mobile suit. And there's the two different sizes for the, for the number, the bigger ones that go on the shield and then the smaller ones that go on the backpack right there. Sorry about that. I'm getting used to, I'm trying to figure out the right camera angles and such for the reviews so that you guys can see the most. And I'm right now, this new one, I'm getting used to seeing, you know, where the camera is compared to my hands and everything else. Um, the other accessories that we have is we do have the open splayed hand, but that's only on the left. We do have a full set of fist hands. And then on the right hand, there is the trigger hand. Now, this one works really great. It comes apart um, right, it, right here. It, it's actually, it, this part comes apart. There's some place to put the tab for the, for the actual weapons, because each weapon has a tab, or the guns, you know, both the bazooka and the machine gun have a tab that goes in there, and then you can snap this back together and the, it you know the trigger finger lines up where it needs to and all that kind of stuff now the it does come with the heat hawk unfortunately this area here where the tab is 
is too thick to fit in the trigger finger hand. And this part without the tab is too thick to fit in the grasped hand. So the only way you could hold on to the heat hawk is using the jointed real grade style hands, which can have mixed results. You know, that unfortunately what happens is that they, they, they put a ridge right where the tab goes in on the hand that prevents the tab that's supposed to make it so you can hold on to this thing not go in far enough to be able to hold on to it and the joints in the fingers aren't strong enough to grasp and keep it in place. So they've got to do some work and I hope they have because I think that they're up to like 37 or 38 in the line. So it's been several years. Um, this one was brought out in 2011. So we're talking what, 12 years now. Um, so hopefully they have improved or gotten rid of these grasping hands because some, they can be a pain in the butt to work with. Not only do they not grasp things, but these little fingers, because they're held on with a tiny ball joint, they will tend to come off. So I, I kind of avoided using these in any way while working on this before, um, you know, before the review, um, until I discovered that the Heat Hawk needs those. The other accessories we have is we have the Zaku machine gun. It's got the uh, cartridge right here. There is not an extra cartridge. So, you know, you could take this off and put it on the side skirts or the back, because this right here is what holds the Heat Hawk. And this can also go to the side. But there's a, there's a, there's a, Hole, there's, there's a fitting just like that on the back here. So the back can hold the cartridge, but there's not an extra one. So most likely they're just going to keep it on the gun. It has the sight that moves back and forth. The nice thing is, is that it looks like the cartridge would get in the way, but it doesn't. So that's really nice design. And then, of course, you've got the extra handle you got the regular handle here, and then you've got the extra handle that just goes back and forth if you want to grasp it with two hands. And we've got the Zaku Bazooka, which once again has the normal grasp right here. It has the extra handle, and then it has the sight that goes back, you know, up and down. So, that's that. And then this does have a custom um, base adapter. This fits right on any of the bases that you want to work, want to use. So you just you just keep the square part there, and you just put that. That just fits right on there. And this attaches right here at the bottom of the. Uh, the waist piece here, and I and I already I put it on not with the um, not with the stand, but I just put this piece on, and it, it it is quite very secure. In fact, I had to use a piece separator just to get it off. Um, so it it's going to stay on this stand, unlike some of the other with a custom uh, stand adapter where it just is very loose and you got to worry about whether or not the piece is going to fall off when it's on the shelf or not. This one you don't have to worry about because it's very secure. So this here, you know, just, just because of the fact that there was a few, couple little, oh, let me describe the wrist here. Now, and it's for the both of them. Now, you know, the hands are held on with, with the typical um, ball joint here. Now, the wrists. As you can see, this piece, at, as it stands right now, won't go down all the way. Now, that's because, like many times 
with a um with a wrist you know wh where things attach you'll have the floating wrist piece and then there'll be this other piece that goes in and snaps in and keeps that floating wrist piece in place type of thing well in this case out of the box this little piece right here that's the top of the wrist didn't fit in there and you know it, it's it's one thing to have maybe this wrist, wrist piece you got to keep track of when you take a hand off but to have the wrist piece because it didn't really seat in there it would come off as well but then to have this little tiny flat piece in there as well this piece would get lost like in a nanosecond so i decided that i would and and it didn't it did not fit the way the manual showed that it should fit in there because it, it gave the impression that it was supposed to snap but i think what it really was showing was that it's supposed to just lay on top and then you have to make sure you don't lose it every time you change the hands. So what I did is I decided to glue it. Now, in order to get it to fit in there, I had to make some adapt adaptations to it, like sanding things off and stuff like that, and finally got it in there to where I could glue it. <coughs> Unfortunately, that means that this piece right here is now too tall, is... is that's too tall for this to fit in all the way now because that's glued in place. I, I would definitely do it a different way next time. Um, so I, I learned a lot on what not to do on this. But it just seems like a very strange thing to have happen with the uh, with a mobile suit like that when you have a couple of tiny pieces where anytime you want to change the hands that then you need to uh, worry about those because they're just going to fall right off as soon as you remove the hands. So either that or Bandai expects that once this is put together, you'll do one pose and then put it on a shelf and never touch it again. Because then you don't have to worry about that. But I didn't want to have to worry about that because I need to do some poses and video and everything else like that still to show various, you know, poses for this. So, next time I know not to do that when I do another Zaku. So, um, because of that and a couple of other little things, especially the fact that the hip piece broke, and unfortunately that hip piece was the entire inner frame piece. It was incorporated in there. I had to replace the entire inner frame piece to make it work. Um, I'm going to give this a B overall. Uh, I think it's a great kit, but I don't think it's representative of any of the real grades that are out now, because this is a very, very early one. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, what I have done is I have set up a Google Calendar to show my build schedule. So if you're interested in finding out what I'm building and when, please do subscribe to that. The link is up here. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.